gases exchange in terrestrial insects. In these insects, the respiratory system consists of a system of tubes known as trachea. This system of tubes make up the tracheal system. And the tracheal system consists of openings on the surface known as spiracles, the tubes known as trachea, that is plural, singular, is trachea, and even smaller tubes known as tracheals. So the spiracles located on the sides open or on the flanks of the body and the numbers of these spiracles vary from one insect to another. But in many insects such as the grasshopper, there are ten spiracles on each side of the body. Two of these are on the abdomen here and eight sorry two are on the thoracic sorry beg your pardon two are on the thoracic while the other eight are on the abdomen each of these spiracle is guided by a pair of valves which control the opening and closing and in some insects the spiracles is covered with hairs to minimize water loss through evaporation. So the spiracles open into a system of tubes known as the trachea. And in some parts of the tube system, there are air sacs. There are some air sacs. These are thin walled air sacs that are connected to the trachea. These act as reservoirs and can be expanded or collapsed as may be necessary. So if you look at the internal structure here, if you expand one part of the tracheal system, see the spiracles on the surface that is guarded by valves. And then the spiracles open into a system of interconnected trachea. Now, the walls of this trachea are strengthened with chitin material. There are rings of chitin that strengthen the walls of the trachea, thereby to prevent them from collapsing. So the trachea keeps, that is the chitin rings, are kept open by the rings of chit, uh, chitin, that is, the, the walls of this trachea are kept open by the rings of chitin. So the trachea keep dividing into smaller and smaller tubes. At some parts, they say it is connected to the air sac that acts as a reservoir for air. And then eventually, each trachea divides into fine tubes known as the tracheals. The tracheals have no cuticle and they don't have any cheating on their walls. In fact, they constitute the effective respiratory surface. It is through the thin walls of the tracheals that gases diffuse into and out to get to the tissues. So the tracheals divide and dig deep into the body tissues such as the muscles. So in the tracheal system, you said consisting of the spiracles that open into trachea, the trachea keep dividing until eventually they end up in the fine tracheals that are in, in contact with the body tissues. So the tracheal system is quite different from many other the ones that are found in many organisms, they have the spiracles on the surface that open into tubes. Then tubes divide further and distribute all parts of the body, including the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. Now, 
gases get into and out of the tracheal system and eventually into and out of the tissues by simple diffusion. Now, air is drawn into and out of the tracheal system in many insects by muscular movements of the abdominal wall. This is abdominal wall. In insects such as bees, the abdominal segments move in and out along their length. That is this. The waves beginning from one end and continues to the other end. But in the larger insects such as locusts and cockroaches, the segments of the abdomen move laterally. That is, in, they move in and out on the sides. So there is contraction and expansion of the abdomen to change the volume within the tracheal system and thus change the pressure. And in this way, they're able to facilitate uh, ventilation that is drawing in of the air to facilitate gases exchange. Now, in the grasshopper, for example, the muscular movements are coordinated in such a way that air is taken in by the two pairs of thoracic spiracles. The two pairs of thoracic spiracles take in the air, and the air then flows through the tracheal system towards the abdominal part. Once it has formed through the body, then this air is expelled through the abdominal spiracles. Okay, so that during breathing, because insects do breathe in and out, the thoracic spiracles do open, that is during inspiration, while those of the abdominal spiracles close. So during inspiration, that is during breathing in, air is drawn in through the thoracic spiracles and then the air is, uh, the valves close and then the air is forced along the system of tubes by muscular movements. Now once the air gets into the tracheals, once the air gets into the tracheals, Gases exchange takes place, so air is forced in, then moves to the terminals where we have the tracheals. Now on the surface of the tracheal there's a thin film of water that makes the surface moist and therefore enhances diffusion. So once at the tracheals, oxygen diffuses out into the tissues while carbon four oxide diffuses from the tissues and into the tracheals. So there's, that, always, there's always that diffusion gradient, oxygen diffusing into the tissues. First into the tissue fluid, there's some the, the film of water. So oxygen diffuses in the film of water and then into the cells. While carbon four oxide diffuses out of the cells and into the thin film of water, then into the tracheal system. Then the abdominal spiracles valves open and air is then pushed out through the abdominal spiracles once gases exchange has taken place. So air is drawn in through the thoracic Spiracles forced through the tracheal system by abdominal muscle contraction, then out through the abdominal spiracles into the at atmosphere. So there is active intake of air, but the exchange of gases is by diffusion across the surfaces of the tracheal.